gentlemen, Mike Beer kicking off the 50 cent late pick five at the spa on Whitney Saturday with a grade one. And it's a good one. Race number eight is the test. Let's take a look at this field. It is the signature race for three-year-old Philly sprinters in the United States. And it is a very good field. Search results is the five to two morning line favorite. She is almost perfect. She is four for five in her career. Her only loss, a neck defeat at the hooves of the mighty Malifat in the Kentucky Oaks. She's the horse to beat. She is the horse to beat. There's no doubt about that. This is a pretty tough field, though, Dan. It's interesting because you, you know search results is good when you just look at her on paper. She really holds no edge on this field, um, but it just feels like she always gets the right trip. And, and as it turns out, she actually enjoys a pretty good fight through the stretch. Mike, let's throw up the time form U.S. pace projector for this year's test. Bella Sophia is very, very fast. She's very lightly raced with a ton of upside. I agree with time form U.S. I think if she wants the lead, she can take it away from always Karina. Illumination is kind of a wild card from the rail. I, I looked I looked at the pace the same exact way. I mean, I sort of just feel like Luis Saez and Bella Sophia drawn to the outside just has to come out of there running um, and, and just see what happens to his inside. Um, I'm worried that Illumination, uh, the Bafford horse from the rail, is just going to be on ascend here, and then we'll see what happens from there. Bafford has always thought highly of Illumination, a $900,000 daughter of Medallia Dioro, ran her in three stakes races, one grade one as a maiden last year, and then regrouped. First start off the layoff, first start at three, they found a maiden special weight. Let's watch Illumination, who just showed them her heels. She went right to the front, she sets a little legitimate pace, she dominates, she wins like an odds-on horse should. Now she's taking a huge step up in class. Uh, she is. Uh, Baffert ha did test this horse as a two-year-old, I um, mean, she didn't really come through for him. It's a little bit surprising to see Baffert, you know, um, think that highly of a horse and be wrong. But this horse, I guess, just wasn't that good last year, Dan. Very big improvement off the left out last time. She got absolutely loose on the lead that day. That's not going to happen here, but it does feel like there's a chance she's pretty good and she has the requisite fast works leading up to this race. Super sensational, the number two, is a horse that began her career with immense promise, sprinting on the synthetic at Woodbine. Very visually impressive in both of those races. Now, she was on the Kentucky Oaks Trail briefly. Maybe those distances were a little long. Mark Cassie cut her back for the eight bells, a race where she was up close to a fast pace and got into a little bit of traffic. And then last time out, the victory ride. Let's watch that effort on July the 10th. Now, this is not a strong addition, I thought, from a class standpoint in the victory ride. But Super Sensational did some good things. Not the greatest start. She comes widest. I wish she finished it off a little stronger. Yeah, I I sort of agree with you. I mean, she does what she has to do in here, and I'm not going to knock this horse who I agree with you. It felt like turning back was the right thing. I guess I could go either way on her eight bells. Um, was pretty close to a good pace. A little bit of trouble, uh, of trouble getting clear in the stretch and then, you know, finished kind of an okay fourth. I don't know, Dan. I wanted to like that race that we just watched a little bit more. She ran fine in there, did what she had to do, but it wasn't a great field, and it was even worse when you realize that the two favorites in there were total no-shows and finished last and next to last. And after that, this horse really had nothing to do but but show up. I wonder if the three Zagel just woke up on the right side of the stall one morning and decided to be a racehorse. And that's not knocking her win in the grade three forward gal in her second lifetime start, although it was with a very paltry buyer speed figure. But the Mother Goose, I don't think a lot of people were expecting the Mother Goose from Zagel. Let's watch that race. One turn mile and a 16th for her. She sent off at 18 to one because her buyers are light. Always Karina, who's in this race, is the odds on favorite. Zagel grabs Always Karina by the throat right here and keeps on rolling. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, agreed, Dan. I mean, it's not like she lucked into this win. Um, you know, maybe she wouldn't have won had the horse that's getting into the third right now, Clarier, not had trouble at the start. Otherwise, this horse just really took a big step forward in there. I actually liked her debut quite a bit, which was over the seven furlong distance. I hated her forward gal, but she did make it two for two at seven furlongs. Um, listen, maybe she just didn't really want to stretch out. It, it was interesting, if nothing else, Dan, and I'm not saying that I liked her last time. It was interesting that Pletcher even ran her in there um, because her prior form had been so bad. But Pletcher obviously kept the faith, and he was right. Three for three around one turn, cutting back to seven shouldn't be an issue. Obligatory is the number four, the winner of the eight bells, when she took advantage of that very, very fast pace to run everybody down. She came back in the acorn, and she ran against search results, and... She was rolling at the end of that race. She just couldn't get to search results, ran out of track, 
She is hoping Bella Sophia Illumination, maybe always Karina, hook up and go real fast early. I think certainly a fast pace would help her um, based on her acorn last time. She might not even need it, Dan. Um, that pace was not fast at all. And she was getting the search results late. I mean, you could look at her eight bells and say, ah, well, she was 16 to one. She took advantage of a meltdown, um, got a clean trip and won. Not the case last time. She ran a, a very big race last time. And I think she's going to be really tough in here. We saw always Karina lose her two for two undefeated record in the mother goose. She ran okay to be second as the odds on favorite. Did you see an excuse though? I mean, you're right. Clarier who was expected to, to be the major contender in that race, missed the break and always Karina got away with some easy fractions. I thought. Yeah. The pace wasn't fast. Um, Zygel who we've already looked at and who was a big price in there sat right on top of her um, engaged her. And this horse was just no match. It wasn't, you know, a terrible performance, but it wasn't a good one, Dan. Um, you know, listen, maybe the, at the end of the day, she just doesn't want to go that far and, and cutting back to seven will really help her. And she does have the figures to contend here, but man, she's got as much to prove as anybody in this race. She has other speed to deal with in here as she cuts back and she's three to one on the morning line. And to me, that feels like a terrible price. Make mischief's a little overachiever, isn't she? New York bred. She's won four of 12, uh, third in the acorn. We saw search results. Uh, we're going to see search results beat her. Uh, but she's been handled by a few of these in the past. I wonder if she's just a cut below the top ones in this division. Yeah, she probably is. She's a really, really cool horse. She shows up every time. They keep testing her. She keeps coming through with good performances. But, you know, you're going to look at her last three races where she's been beaten by horses She's facing uh, again in this spot, and you're not going to find excuses for her not to win. She runs fine in those races, just not quite good enough. And here's search results winning the acorn over obligatory and make mischief. She has excellent tactical speed. You can just about put her anywhere within the context of a race. She also doesn't change leads most of the times. And you see her on her left lead here going past day out of the office. Make mischief is kind of one paced in third. You're going to see the Judmont Philly really get into the picture with a strong late run. But search results had an insurmountable advantage at this point. Yeah, got the better trip, had a big stretch lead there and managed to hold it together to win again. Um, she's just real nice. Dan. There's nothing that flashy about her when you watch her run, but she's a real nice horse, has great tactical speed, shows up every time. I do think she's the horse to beat. I'm not terrified to bet against her, but I won't be surprised when she wins again. Do you get the feeling the eight Bella Sophia is coming into this race under the radar? I mean, there are some giant pedigrees in here and she has a modest pedigree. There are some graded stakes winners and grade one winners in here and she's never won a stakes race, but she's run fast in all three starts, including the race we'll show you right now on July the 11th at Belmont, three quarters of a mile, not winners of one other than part of a solid pace. And now she draws away like a favorite should. Yeah, this is pretty impressive. This isn't a great field. It is older fillies and mares, but it's not a great field. As soon as uh, Ortiz shakes the reins at her, she blows this field out. This is a really impressive win. Her debut was a really impressive win. In between, they ran her in the Jersey Girl dance. She was good that day. She dueled with a pretty nice horse and Miss Brazil all the way and just got run down late. I, we'll see. This is a big test for her, and she's never been seven furlongs either. So, you know, there are things to question about her for sure. I really don't question her talent, though. She looks like she has a good amount of that. I agree. And that's why I put her in my picks as well as you. And you're putting her on top as we take a look at our selections. Bella Sophia is six to one on the morning line. Maybe she drifts even a little bit off of that price, Mike, because you can go so many different directions. Uh, she gets the jump on everybody. The four obligatory runs late. Yeah, I, I like obligatory. I just wanted to take a little bit of a shot with Bella Sophia and hope that she gets to the front in here um, and can maybe take a little step forward, which she probably has to do. But then the more I looked at the race, the more I just feel like it's very evenly matched. Um, and I do think she has the talent to contend with these horses at a price. And like you, I want to try to find a little bit of value because as you mentioned, it is evenly matched. Super sensational sprint races to me for the most part are all good. I think she's going to get a little bit of pace in here. I would have to think there'll be some hitting. And I think seven's good for her. I want to give her one more chance. She is going to have to move forward off her last race. Eight, four, seven, six for Mike. Two, eight, three, seven for me. It's the grade one test. Kicking off a 50 cent late pick five at the spa on Whitney Saturday. Good luck.